97 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The IDF is preparing to mount a significant retaliatory response should the Iranian proxy Hezbollah carry out an attack on Israel. The Jewish state ranks fifth worst afflicted by the corona contagion among developed countries. It evidently maintains one of the lowest mortality rates worldwide. The Israeli parliament, or Knesset, approves a grant to every Israeli citizen, amounting to some 6.5 billion shekels in total, as public anger over government restrictions plagues the streets of the country. Tensions continue to run high along Israel's northern front with Lebanon. The IDF is preparing to mount a significant retaliatory response should the Iranian proxy Hezbollah carry out an attack against the Jewish state. The military maintains its highest state of alert and is reinforcing its troops from Rosh Hashanah on Israel's most western border with Lebanon to Mount Khelmon on the country's most eastern border with Syria. Nevertheless, given an intelligence assessment that Hezbollah seeks to strike military rather than civilian targets, no restrictions have been imposed on tourist sites and the civilian routine is being maintained. Meanwhile, the IDF decided to refrain from publicizing surveillance footage of the Hezbollah operatives fleeing Israel back to Lebanon in an evident attempt to alleviate the tense situation on the ground, giving Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah the option to alter his decision to mount an attack against Israeli territory in light of his pledge to retaliate for any Hezbollah operative killed by Israel in Syria. It is important to highlight that Hezbollah has seemingly lowered its profile over the past 48 hours, stopping short from issuing any public threats against Israel. Now in other domestic news, Jerusalem is dealing with mounting public anger over government enacted restrictions that consequently devastates the economy. While Israeli authorities are struggling to combat the spread of the corona contagion, the economic consequences of government enacted restrictions have drastically raised the unemployment rate to 21.2 percent, which translates into 862,438 jobless individuals out of Israel's 9.2 million inhabitants. While the Israeli government, under the leadership of Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, initially received praise over the handling of the so-called first wave of the pandemic, a renewed outbreak of the contagion is evidently spreading uncontrollably, with an exponential rise ranking Israel the fifth worst stricken among developed countries. According to the Israeli Health Ministry's latest accumulated data, 70,582 Israelis contracted the disease since mid-March, 43,813 of whom have completely healed. Furthermore, the report knows that 319 Israelis are currently diagnosed in critical condition, of whom 100 individuals are in ventilator support. And while I'm sad to report that 509 Israelis succumbed to the disease, a study published this week by the John Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center has found that Israel's corona-related mortality rate is among the lowest worldwide at 0.7 percent. Meanwhile, as part of a new government decision, a partial weekend lockdown has gone into effect throughout the country. The restrictions are mainly on commerce and they will be in place until Sunday morning. It is important to note, however, that the decision to impose a partial lockdown has infuriated the union of stores and malls, which instructed the shopping centers and stores that are usually open on Saturday not to abide by the government decision. The union, which cited a health ministry position which deemed the partial lockdown ineffective, accused the government of exploiting the situation for the purpose of exercising religious coercion that was in no way related to attempts to curb the spread of the corona contagion. Meanwhile, in an attempt to alleviate the public suffering in what appears to be a liberal interpretation of the Keynesian theory for dealing with economic crisis, the Israeli parliament voted in favor of a government-proposed grant to every Israeli citizen who will cost the state an estimate of 6.5 billion shekels, which is equal to about 1.6 billion euros or 1.9 billion US dollars. As I told you, the government is now a program to pay for all citizens that I have done. The money will come to the bank of your bank, the government of Israel, already in the next week. This is another thing that will help you. ויניע את גלגלי הכלכלה שלנו. 
אנחנו עשינו הרבה צעדים כאלה, במיליארדים רבים. התוכנית של רשת הביטחון לעסקים ולשכירים, הארכת תקופת הזכאות לדמי אבטלה, החל"ת ועוד צעדים, ויהיו עוד צעדים, כי אנחנו חייבים ויכולים לנצח יחד את הקורונה. While the Israelis are not expected to reject the government handout, the general public does not seem impressed by the initiative. Thousands of Israelis are flooding the streets of Jerusalem and Tel Aviv almost every other evening to protest the government's handling of the crisis. I mean, we're losing here. Everybody's sitting at home, like I said before, not making money. Although someone that has stolen millions from us is again not going to jail, not facing charges. We need justice. We just got from him 750 shekels, possibly. I wonder if that actually fits him for one day for the amount that he shows his spending. So it's ridiculous. So yes, money. Money is a mover. It may move people. According to the president of the Israel Democracy Institute, Yochanan Plesnil, there is a growing sentiment of distrust, disappointment and alienation throughout the country over the way the Israeli leadership is handling the current crisis. Well, the level of distrust in the Prime Minister's handling of the uh, crisis is widespread. Only less than 30% of Israelis uh, think that the Prime Minister is handling the crisis properly. So the protesters, while it's just the dozens uh, of thousands who are coming uh, out almost every second day, which is a significant number, but it's far from a huge number of hundreds of thousands, uh, they represent a sentiment uh, that is uh, uh, deeply embedded in the uh, hearts and minds of many Israelis, a sense of uh, disappointment and alienation from the way the political system led by the Prime Minister is handling the current crisis. It is important to mention that many of the referred to protests have turned violent into scenes unprecedented to Israeli streets, which consequently led to an increase of reports of alleged police brutality. This led Israeli police chief Moti Cohen to publish a statement in which he emphasized that while law enforcement is adamant to ensure the citizens of Israel maintain their rights, including freedoms of expression and protest, these freedoms will only be permitted within the boundaries of Israeli law. גם בתקופה מורכבת זו נאפשר לכל אזרח את חופש הביטוי והמחאה בגבולות החוק. מרבית הציבור מוחק החוק, ועלינו השוטרים להבטיח את מימוש זכויותיו. נמשיך לפעול בהתאם להערכת המצב ולאפשר את ההפגנות בכל רחבי הארץ. זאת ללא קשר לנושא ההפגנה ולזהות המפגינים. לצד זאת לא נאפשר אלימות בכל סוג שהיא, פגיעה במפגינים, באזרחים ובשוטרים כאחד. נפעל בנחישות Commissioner Cohen further appealed to the Israeli public to exercise patience toward opinions of others, which is vital for the preservation of the state and its values. I am אני פונה לאזרחי ישראל באופן אישי, כבדו את החוק, גלו סבלנות לאחר, וביחד נשמור על מדינת ישראל וערכיה. It is important to mention that despite the numerous protests and public disturbances throughout the state, a domestic poll published by the Israel Ayom Daily revealed that Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu continues to maintain a 33% approval rate, as opposed to his political rivals, including alternate Premier and Defense Minister Benny Gantz, who only attained 11%. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's initiative, I would like to encourage you to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Turkey in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have an Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom. We will see you again on Monday at the same time.